Welcome back to Naval Action, another look at Naval Action Legends. First of all, a sort of mini news flash, I suppose. Events have been added. Uh, you win gold, which I think you're going to be able to buy special ships with. Uh, I heard someone talk about the pickle. Um, you can only go into the event solo. You must use that play match to go in. You have 10 battles over a weekend. There's 34 hours left in the weekend. Um, and basically you're ranked based on um, it's the best of 10 battles so it's your best kill average I'm assuming wins and assists help with uh, tiebreakers that's the gold reward you'll see I've done two battles three kills one win and six assists bloody some Muppet AI captured the fort so all my kills got robbed on that win uh, on the loss I got monstered. Um, you'll see these guys here who are rocking at the top. They're all doing two and a half to three kills a battle. So that's pretty spiffy. And the rewards give you gold. And I'm assuming with the gold you'll be able to buy, I don't know, a pickle or something. We'll find out. However, what we're really here to do is have a look at the next set of ships. So... Um, in my previous or first ship review video, I took us through the cutter, the um, brig, the navy brig, the mercury, the snow and the Cerberus. And incidentally, the specials, this is what you can buy with the uh, gold that you win. So you can get yourself a, whatever that is, pirate frigate, a pickle or an inghi. And I'll purchase it. Purchase. Purchase? No, apparently you actually do need the gold. So you go a pickle, a uh, pirate frigate, or an inghi. Anyway, back to the regular ships. Um, we went through the cutter, the brig, the navy brig, the mercury, the snow, and the serb, and we sort of noted that these two here at the end are the gods of those lines, with the navy brig and the serb being um, tanks uh, pound for pound. So today we're going to look at the next four ships, the Rename, the Frigate, the Essex and the Indefatigable. So let's do exactly that. So here we are with the Rename now. The Rename is a nice ship to get into. Um, it's got slightly more armor than the Serb, so it's not a downgrade as such and it's also got good armor. Um, good thickness at 52 not as good as the Serb probably the most important thing to know with the Rename is that there the speed 13.28 making it I think the fastest boat at the moment in naval action legends uh, it also has a relatively good turning capability turning of four which for these bigger ships is pretty good um, she only has 240 crew uh, she's got 15 guns on each side and two on the back. Um, now, the real strength of the ship is its speed and its turning. Early on, she can brawl uh, with anything less than or equal to her. Um, the loadout that you can put on is the nine pound uh, Caros, uh, sorry, nine pound longs and mediums, and then really you're playing Caros, 12, 18, 24, and 32 Caros. And you can face hug. So again, if you're up against predominantly AI or Herpaderp players, um, the Caro is the weapon of choice. If you're predominantly up against good players, uh, running with longs isn't such a bad idea. Um, Although the nine pound longs is a bit of a problem on this boat because um, they're not as really the 12 pounds and up longs are where you want to be if you're going to be doing a long uh, spec just because it means you can sit at 250 meters away and, and, and do a lot of damage. You can still pen 81 which means with a flush shot you can pretty much pen anything up until a well even uh, probably a third rate to be honest. Um, but you never get a flush shot at 250, so there's going to be an angle, and the angle means you've got to have a higher pen. But anyway, if you are predominantly playing against players, then I would strongly recommend um, giving it longs. 
or because this one's got the speed you can wear the caros nip in and nip out i was up against a player the other night and that's exactly what he was doing in his Renault. He was running around the back, waiting for you to dump your broadside. Then he'd pull up level to you, smack you with the carrows, and then drop away again. Um, and that's not a bad thing. But it's a good boat, the Renault. Um, I went through the Renault, leveled through the Renault really quickly. Um, I'm not sure if I've still got my officers. Something I didn't mention last week is you can actually dismiss these officers and then rehire them on another boat. You pay a fee for doing so. So I've got a sailmaster here, for example. It would cost me 65000 to bring that level six sailmaster, uh, which incidentally was a mistake. I didn't mean to have a sailmaster. I meant to have uh, the guy who makes you go faster. But anyway, um, you can... Um, dismiss one of these guys and then add in um, someone who you want for so we might have a Botswain here for turning we'll put him on the boat there now I can now come in here and dismiss him and then he'd be available to retrain on another boat um, you can get your crew guys you can get your officers up to level seven so you'll see there my complete waste of time um, sail repair master who was costing me a mozza in maintenance fees um is a level six so well done me for having a pointless bloody officer on anyway um so that's the renome i absolutely whizzed through the renome it was easy to get kills um they monster the ai because the ai is very herper derp so you you really can catch up with the ai bluter it angle away so you're not offering a flush shot to him um, and then come back in flush, blue rim again, angle away, blue rim again, so on and so forth. Also, without doubt, the best stern camper um, once you get above the Serb. Uh, the Serb isn't a good Serb, uh, stern camper. I'm just saying that once you get above that sort of sixth ship, this is an absolute beauty to be running up and down. So if, if there's a couple of big boys left in the fight, you can support your lads um, by banging on the backside of the enemy. It's a pain in the bum. Rudder damage on the bigger ships is a calamity. So some of the bigger ships, uh, you all, it feels like you double their turning circle, even with a yellow rudder. Um, you kill cannons by banging up the backside. Um, and of course that's important because you fundamentally lower your opponent's DPS. And um, you obviously kill crew as well, which will help in any boarding action. Um, and with you having the speed, the other thing is you can run up behind a ship and just put your nose on the backside and turn them a little bit so that your mateys can board them um, or even you can let an AI board them because AI is a pain in the bum because it's all tooled up. So that's the Renome. Uh, it's a great little boat, great nimble boat. Just a pity it doesn't have 12 pound longs so that it could sit off at 250 meters and, and pretty much guarantee that penetration. You still get good pen at 250, um, but you're, you're right on the cusp of, of where you need to be. Um, the next ship you get is the frigate. Now, the frigate, um, it's easy to underestimate the frigate, but the, um, the, the frigate's 12.17, which is still going at a reasonable clip. Um, all of a sudden, you'd, you'd jump to 280 crew, which basically means boarding any of the smaller ships as easy as. Um, she's got okay turning. Uh, she's not a great turner. Um, she has a good broadside, 19 um, guns on the sides. She has uh, front cannons. Uh, I like to load some chain in the front cannons and just whittle down folks I'm chasing. Uh, making them use their sail repair is good. It's bugged at the moment, so you keep on repairing for the whole duration of the cooldown. But when that's fixed, it's still good. And it's a double-edged sword, incidentally, because when your crew are repairing the sails, that's 30 or crew, it'll often mean you won't be able to get your boarding prep up. Uh, you'll sit on 47 or 48, because most of these ships run pretty tight as far as crew numbers are concerned. Um, she has much better side armour and thickness, which does make a, a, a pretty good tank, actually. I'd say of the four ships we're looking at today, the Renault, the Frigate, the Essex, and the Indefatigable, the frigate is sort of steady eddy. Um, it's, it's, it's reasonably quick. It's quicker than the Essex and it turns better than the Essex. Um, in saying that, um, that island over there turns better than the Essex. 
which is befuddles me. I, I remember in my open world days, I was pretty sure the Essex was a good turner, but not anymore. So the frigate, uh, 19 guns on the broadside, which is pretty nice. Um, and it's a good loadout too. So you can get the uh, 18 pound longs. Now, if you look at the 18 pound longs, they pen anything at 250 meters and they'll pen most things beyond that. Um, so that up, even up to 500 meters, you're doing pen. Um, does take a while while to reload though a long um, you know if you compare that to the Caro 47 seconds but the Caro's look at the Caro's once you're at 250 meters you're only penning um, a thickness of 65 with a flush shot so if I've got a couple of mods on my frigate at 250 meters I'm pretty much untouchable to 32 pound Caro's at the 250 meters and remember when you're set, setting your set to fire, the second option is 250, and the white lines on the water stop at 250. So it's a great way of judging the distance. I wouldn't use that. I'd use the, the, the fourth option um, for firing. But nonetheless, um, you can sit at 250 meters, and nothing with Caro's will be able to do you any damage. I mean, they might get the odd lucky one in, um, but they're going to have to be almost you know absolutely parallel with you and if you get your thickness up with some riders and uh, some of the other mods we'll just have a look at those so you can see what I'm talking about um, the the planking increases the thickness by two percent and the riders increases the thickness by five percent so that's seven percent so that's going to get to like 64 or something like that and with the Herpaderpa Caros, they pen 65.3 at 250 meters. Um, so that needs to be an absolute flush shot. It's also really hard to aim Caros 250 meters because they, they, um, as I said in last week's episode, uh, last week's uh, ship review, it's a bit, it's a bit like an epileptic octopus trying to fire a shotgun. Um, so you're, you're pretty much impregnable at 250 meters. Now, when the game is populated with mostly players, the Caro face-hugging meta will most likely fall away and there'll be a lot more ca uh, canny players who are running around with the big longs on, um, giving you a slap at range. Uh, the only thing to note is it is only the bottom deck that lets you get the 18 longs. Um, so what I'd recommend is firing your bottom deck and then using your top deck to bang into their masts. Although even with the 12 pound longs, you're still penning at 250 meters. So you could choose to put them all in. You might want to fire them though in two salvos, um, or even single fire just to get your aiming when you're firing with longs at range. Um, do that single fire just to make sure you've got it right and then fire that broadside off and if you've got mixed caliber guns on you might want to sort of use f1 or f2 shut down your top deck fire your bottom deck off re-aim with your top deck because they do have slightly different ballistic trajectories and quite often if you've got like um, in this case here I think it's 12 on the bottom deck and 7 on the top you'll you'll find that only the bottom 12 going because the top ones have come out at a wonky trajectory and they just fly across you, you'll see you're getting crew kills and stuff that's because your shots are whizzing across the top of the decks rather than pumping into the side of them um, so that's the frigate once you've got her tooled up with um, planking and riders you'll find that she's um quite a quite a tough little beast to be honest um and um i use gun sights just to improve my accuracy if i'm running around with the longs um, i've recently opened the third slot that happens when you get to captain as you rank up you can hire more officers it becomes a bit more expensive but you can hire more officers that's the frigate i would say she's average eddy uh, in the four ships we're reviewing today, the um, sort of low end of the frigate class. We'll get on to the big boys next uh, next ship review where I'll look at the Trink, um, the Connie and the Agamemnon nom nom. And I'll probably have a look at the, uh, in, uh, the Ingerman Lund as well in that one. Um, so that's the frigate.
Um, I ran around, my mates were levelling up, they were all in Serbs and Renault, so I ran around in the frigate for a little while, I have to say, I really I really liked her, she's competitive against everything, she's got quite a lot of side armour, uh, you can buff that a bit with the um, planking and the um, riders, I really wish it would show you down here when you highlighted it, the fact, you know, what the net effect of these things are, rather than just giving you percentages. Um, you know, you could hold over here and it would tell you what the mod is or something like that rather than me having to do the mass maths every time I look at it. Um, alrighty, so now let's have a look at the Essex. Now, um, when I used to play open world, I used to quite like the Essex um, and it was quite nimble. For some reason, maybe it's maybe I was playing against Herpaderps or I just got good at turning this thing. Um, or I've got some sort of selective memory disease, but in, in Legends, her turning is 3.18, which is kind of pants. Um, makes her really crap on the turn. Um, and, yeah, I was sort of surprised at that a little bit. She does come with more armour and more thickness. Um, her speed's pretty good, 11.86. So she's only like 0.3 of a knot. Um, slower than the frigate. Um, she has no chasers, which is a bit annoying, but she does have 20 guns on the side. Um, I don't know, with the Essex, um, her, her loadout, you can get the 18 pound longs um, on the um, top deck, just on the bottom deck, sorry, but on the weather deck, you're only running with the 12. She has the same loadout as the frigate. She sort of a slightly beefier, slightly crapper frigate. Um, and, and because the turning is, is, is quite considerably worse than the frigate, um, you know, that's 20% uh, slower turner than the frigate. Um, she is a bit of a pain in the bum. And if you're up against the Essex um, and you're sailing behind it, Quite often, it's you, you don't seem to do as much crew damage with the um, uh, stern rakes as you do in open world. But it's worth it if you can aim low in the water and try and knock out the rudder. Um, the, the, the rudder repair cooldown is quite a long time. So knocking out the rudder is a real pain in the bum. And this thing has just like the worst turning circle um, and that can get it into all sorts of trouble. It can force it to be driven into the shallows or leave it vulnerable when it's going through the wind to a boarding action. Um, so against the Essex, you know, bang on its backside um, and you'll very quickly uh, rudder it. She does have a decent complement of crew at 315, um, which, you know, the Renault's at 240, so that's a huge advantage but she'll never catch a Renault and she's got no chasers. So quite often we were in games with a number of Renaults and there was good captains in them and they were just a pain in the ass to get hold of in the Essex. And if you're left solo against a couple of half decent Renault captains, um, you'll, you'll pay for it basically. And lastly in this ship review, let's have a look at the indefatigable. And the indefatigable of the ships I'm looking at today is sort of God. It's sailing a straight line, God, because it, it can't turn. Um, its speed is about the same as the Essex. Its armour is mental. 56, 70 and 65 thickness. She packs 22 guns on the broadside. She has chasers, which again I like to load chain into. Um... She's, ooh, 55 XP to open my next thing. i have to get the gun sights, I think. Um, perhaps the most frightening thing of all um, is that she can run 42-pound carronades on the top and bottom deck. Um, so if you're buddying up with a mate who's going to be running long so you're not left vulnerable, um, these 42-pounders that load 10 seconds quicker than the... Um, the longs are just brutal. So I go for the magazine here to improve my reload time and I 
um, use a gunner to improve my reload time. So 20% almost improvement on reload time there. So these these longs um, are sorry these carrows are reloading every forty seconds, which um, you know means I will reload three times in the time a captain will reload his longs twice. In saying that, if he sits off my hull, um, I'm not going to be able to. If he sits two hundred and fifty meters away, it won't matter. Um, by the way, I've started turning off automatic maintenance so I can see how I'm earning on the money because money begins to get tight after a while. Um, but this thing, these 42 pan caros, first of all, the naval action devs, what a job they've done with the sound. I was having little geek gasms during the weekend sailing around in this thing. Um, it sounds like Thor shitting thunderbolts, absolutely brutal. Bang on the bass on your, on your surround sound and, uh, feel the whole room vibrate as you leash, you know, 22, um, 42 pound carronades you'll rip half the side of a rename off at close distance on one of these things um, and the other thing to note with these higher calibers with the 32 and 42 pound carronades if you're up close in your fire you really do do a lot of uh, crew damage too um, i was killing like 25 30 crew per broadside when i was face hugging um, indefatigable um, means unrelenting unyielding it should be called the indestructible with 5670 base armor and then you chuck on planking which gives it um, another 10 percent so you know that's taking it up to the 62 6300 um, the riders give it another three percent so you're up around 6400 the riders also give you that thickness so you're up at 71 thickness 73 thickness by the time you chuck your planking on if you go in the longs build on this and it's a great ship because it's so steady uh, although she can't turn um the um i would go the gun sights um if i was playing the long game and then the other thing you might want to consider doing if you are going to be playing the long game is running with the ports trim um, it gives you a broader range of fire and again makes you more accurate accurate so you might want to run with these two um, to help with your shootingness and then get a um, uh, the gunner and you'll be quick um, I've put on a speed buff onto this one just because she she's not very fast and I've got the uh, turning guy because she Oh, she's just awful at turning and if you're up against one of th these things that really is her weakness um, she's the worst turner of all the ships we've looked at um, at 2.5 if you've got a yellow rudder um, it, it, it feels like something's broke um, you, ju you barely turn it's, it's such a horrible turning circle and as far as getting kills in it, that's one of the things. It's very easy to get yourself away from the fight in this thing. And if you, you know, you'll go and decimate some poor bugger who's daft enough to sit off your 42 pound Thor crapping cannons. Um, and you'll do a great job and he's sunk and you've taken barely any damage at all. And then you realize you're 10 minutes sail away from the fray. So when you're sailing this lumbering god, um, I'd really, really suggest um, using your map all the time so you know where you're going to be. 350 crew um, means um, she's a good boarder as well, although you'll get whittled down because you'll constantly be getting shot in the backside. Every time you pass a boat, it'll turn and start pinging you on the backside. Just a little note, I haven't covered this on most of the ships, but this ship really doesn't lean either. This is why she's actually a great long cannon. Um, I had a couple of games where I came up against the same guy and he was using the big longs um, on his indie. Uh, let's see if I can remember his name. Bopara or something like that. And he was doing, he was sort of playing the right way to play the game, to be honest. We were all running around face hugging with our AI snotting carrows. He would sit 200. 250 meters off your side run along with you and basically snipe away at your hull and although you know you never do the damage that the carrows do you do good damage 
Um, to be honest, when this is all player on player, um, running the Caros will be a bit herp derp so I strongly <laughs> advise you do it now. If you're in the event and it's mostly AI that you're up against, running something like um, this type of build um, on a Indefatigable is a beautiful combo because you really do rip them apart. So let's just recap before we close down. Um, the new event is out. It's quite good fun. Um, I'm not quite sure how it matches you up. Some guys who've gone into the events have then ended up in a regular battle um, and, and it's not been particularly balanced for them. The new pirate frigate, which the AI can have, seems to be classed BR'd about the same as an indie. Um, but to be honest, the uh, Indy will just slaughter uh, a pirate frigate if it's stupid enough to come alongside. Uh, so the Renome sheet is speed. Um, great little bow. Unbelievable turn-in rate. Uh, she does heal a wee bit and she's got low crew. Um, that's her vulnerability. That and the fact of the four ships we've looked at, she really is a tiddler. Um, you can plank and... Um, uh, rider the indefatigable up so it's got twice the base armor of the renome twice basically you've got a renome um, uh, tied to the side of a renome as far as health's concerned uh, the frigate she is steady eddy reasonable speed reasonable turning uh, very good gun platform she doesn't heal so you you know you don't have to be depowering quite as much as you do with some of the other ships if you if, if you're sailing up to a ship there's no wind and and so you're leaning over to one side um, because the wind is basically pushing your sails um, that's your heel um, and and so the side if, if the wind's coming this way this side here will be firing up into the sky this side here will be firing down into the water because of the heel on the ship if you press t and what that does is you have sails here on the front and you have sails here in between your main sails um, and by pressing t those sails are filled up and that stops the wind blowing across them you can also turn your masts so that they are flush with the wind so the wind is sort of blowing onto the paper thin side and that will flatten your boat out so she's like she is now in docks completely flat and allow you to get that perfect shot now the less heel you have the less you need to do that and um, if we go back to the renome you see she heals quite a, quite a bit if we go to the trink um, you'll see she heals oh not as bad she used to be a real word renome used to sail with used to kill fucking seagulls with it, the angle it used to have so they've obviously nerfed or buffed that a little bit so the renome heals quite a bit and that's because the uh, wind force coming on from the side because of the sails here at the back and the front and in between is strong um, it's what gives it its speed um, those sails those mid sails they're the ones that give a ship its speed so the cost of the speed um, is the heel um, the frigate like I say she's a steady eddy reasonable thickness reasonable armor um, the Essex eh, got more guns on the sides but not as many up front she's a, for me she's not that much of a step up obviously more armor and more crew uh, but she's a bit slower and a crap turner um, really for me wasn't the super duper sexy ship I was looking for in the Essex I, I was expecting to have much better turn rate um, and that was always a sort of compensation for not having chasers. So, uh, fine brawler, the Essex. So, um, the frigate's got the, the nimbleness, if you like. So, it's a middleweight brawler. And this is a sort of light heavyweight brawler. Um, and then we come to Thor. Um, this thing is unbelievable with the 42 pound carronades. Uh, it's worth just getting it up to the 42 pound carrier so you can hear the sound of the broadside going off and watch watch all the missus's plates fall off the shelves as you unleash into some poor unsuspecting renome that's daftly come alongside you. Alrighty, well that's it for this um, relatively quick ship review. Um, we've covered the Renault to the Indy. I'll be doing the Trink probably up to the Agamemnon nom nom or the Ingemar land um, in the next one. So I hope you like that. And give us a like, give us a subscribe. I'll see you on the ocean and I'll catch you.